There you go. That was Blur with Sunday Sunday getting us off to an exciting indie pop style start here on BBC Six Music. It's the new year. Happy New Year, Joe. Hey, thanks a lot. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, listeners, as well. I'm just making some notes in my notebook uh, about material that I'm going to be um, uh, <laughs> using later in the show. What kind of material have you got there? A bit of corduroy? Uh, uh, no, no written material. Oh. Some gags, you know, <laughs> nice. some routines. Yeah, good one. Were you watching the, uh, hundred... It'll be the first time we've ever used a gag or a routine. That's true, actually. Mm. Well, I used a gag once, but it went down so badly that I vowed never to do it again. Quite right. Were you watching the 100 Greatest Catchphrases, 50 Greatest... How many uh, catchphrases I watched the, three, were there? Three minutes of this. Three minutes. Which three mm. minutes did you get? Which catchphrase? Uh, porridge. Uh, the one before porridge. Porridge is all I remember. What, what was Somebody the explaining the, 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 the roots of the phrase naff. Naff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the catchphrase from Porridge? Uh, You're banged up now. Something like that. Yeah. Get, get it. You, you, what, would you like was, some it Porridge? It was naff off. Naff off. Yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, we've got great stuff coming up in the show. <laughs> Sorry to change the subject. No, quite right. Uh, we, you know, we, I only had 49 <clears throat> other catchphrases to talk about, but well, you we carry on later. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got uh, Text the Nation coming up. We've got the return of Song Wars after its kind of Christmas confusion. We did something like three pre-records for the Christmas period, and some of them are dipped in quality, so we apologise to any listeners who might have noticed that. But things are going to be back to their award-winning best. We haven't actually won the award yet. <laughs> no. But um, all that to look forward to. And, of course, great music coming up, folks. You know, this is the place for great music. Uh, and we're going to play some right now. This is... You love this one, Joe. I do like this one, yeah. He's going to be big this year. It's a very exciting new talent, ladies and gentlemen. And, and uh, who knows what he could achieve by the end of February. This is Jay-Z with Rock Boys. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, that's very funny, Jay-Z, yeah. Mm, no, yeah, it's so silly. It is. Don't, please don't hurt me. Uh, that's American gangster music right there. Hoobie's home. No, Holby's home. Holby? Holby City? Yeah. Someone's bought the DVDs of Holby City. Exactly. Jay-Z's ex excited. He's waving them in. He's standing there in the doorway. Holby's home! We're gonna watch a lot of Holby hey, City tonight! Um, you know what? You don't even have to get your purses out. What? I think they, I think he's talking about giving away free rocks. Oh. That's how he gets everybody buying his rocks. You know, I got a new purse for I Christmas. I thought you were gonna say you got some free rocks for I, Christmas. No, I never got no rocks. That's what I no wanted. Christmas crackle. I wanted some Crackling. No, Christmas crackling. I didn't get none. <laughs> Not a single one. Uh, that's what I wanted. Didn't get it. Mm. I got a wallet. I asked for a wallet. Is it? Yeah. And, uh, it's... What? Is it? What are you saying? <laughs> I'm only for the kids. kids. Is it? That's, the kids only understand that kind of thing. Is that what they say? Is it? Yeah. They don't say we that. will have attracted some because of that Jay Z track. I got a wallet. Listen, I'm Tr trying to tell. Will you shut up? All I said was true. What were you going to say? True say, true say. Yeah. Anyway, keep talking. Uh, well, there's no point. There's no Go point. On, I want to hear about the wallet. No, you don't want to hear about the wallet. Well, to be honest, it can't. What, how can it be interesting? A wallet. Well, ne you'll never know. Now you'll never know. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I was going to say I got a wallet, right, listeners? And uh, it was uh, it was just not what I wanted. All right. There you go, I was right all along. Here, tell us about this track you've chosen. Uh, it's by Vampire Weekend. They're going to be one of the hot bands to watch for the uh, new year. You know, do you find that exciting or depressing when people predict what, what are going to be exciting. the things? Exciting. Exciting. Yeah. Optimistic about the new year. Yeah. Yeah, very positive. You like scanning all the... New black president in, in, in the US, <laughs> right. hopefully. Yeah. Either that or a, or a lunatic. Which one's the lunatic? Huckabee. Huckabee? Uh, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so it's exciting. You know, lots of good new music this yeah, year. Yeah, good. There's going to be. I got a wallet for Christmas. I don't know oh, if you know. God. But um, this is Vampire Weekend with A Punk. There you go. That's Vampire Weekend with A Punk. What were you saying, Jude? That it's A Punk or A Punk? A Punk. Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? Yeah, A Punk. There you go. And uh, that's that's going to be a hot band for for this year. Apparently, it's been predicted. But they're good. I've listened to some of their stuff, and they're excellent. That's good news. Yeah, good. it's good to have good bands be hot, <laughs> yeah. rather than bad ones, you know? really rotten ones. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, coming up quite soon, listeners, we're going to be unveiling this week's Song Wars. We've got no last week's Song Wars to announce the winner of, because we took care of that in one of the many complicated extra New Year's Eve shows. Uh, but the theme for this week's Song Wars is ringtones. Ringtone madness. It's going to be our attempt to get you guys, uh, basically to create a, a ringtone so powerful that everyone who listens to this show has to have it on their phone. Well, we're not asking them to create one, are we? Is that what I said? Yeah. Uh, I meant us. We're going to create it, but it's going to be so good 
that you're all going to want to have it on your phones. Yeah, that's true. And it's so far, this would be a no money making exercise, isn't it? No. If there was any money made, it would go to charity. Right. But we'll take care of giving it to charity. Which charity? Trust us. Which charity would you know. give yours to? Uh, probably Poppy Day. Poppy Day. Poppy Day. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, mine would be something to do with children. Really? Yeah. Because mm, I'm poor kids. I really feel for the children. Yeah, they're so small and they exactly. can't go on roller, the good roller coasters and stuff. They can't really reach anything. No. So that's what I would mainly be uh, extend to extend their arms, trying to give them things Longer to clip arms. onto their arms, yeah, yeah with uh, sort of hooks on the end. Mm. Um, Lovely. Uh, so it's you know it's a dream, and uh, that's coming up very shortly, folks. In fact, after this, I think we're going to unveil Song Wars. But first, we've got a trail for you. What do you hope for the trail? What, what do you hope will be in the trail? Oh, my my hopes for 2008 trails. Uh, I hope there's going to be lots of microphone effects on voices. Yeah, you know, in the middle of a sentence, it might go coming up on sex music. Like like just the last two words as if they're through a megaphone yeah uh some words processed as if they're through a a telephone uh-huh uh and hopefully just just clips of exciting music behind them and lots of little clips of people laughing <laughs> at things you don't really know why they've laughed right right here yeah. we go let's okay. see let's Fingers see if you're uh, got any end. oh there we go they did it at the end that was pretty solid though yeah generally. that was a conventional that was a proper big british castle trailer it was a good trail. None of that faffing around. For, the sh uh, for a show that would be interesting to you. That you like all that yeah, stuff, isn't gamble it? Gamble and huff. I enjoy them a lot. Nice bit of gambling and yeah, yeah. huffing. Sounds great. Uh, okay, now, uh, it's time for Song Wars after this next track, folks. This is Those Dancing Days with Hitten. Who will win the Song Wars today? Perhaps it will be Adam. Or it will be Joe. Either one. You will be the one who decides by texting or emailing. Thought we'd go with that jingle this time as a little counterpoint to what's bound to be fairly annoying and jarring and, uh, well, you know, ringtones are all about sticking in the mind in a very catchy way, aren't they? Yes. Uh, the key is to be really annoying, irritating. Is it? Mm, itchy. I, I found. But have you ever actually used a ring? Have you ever downloaded a ringtone and had it on your phone? Like, what's the current ringtone uh, of your phone? Uh, it's just a, one of the standard ones. It's one of the standard ones. Yeah. You've you never. I put. I put the ones that I did for the show in there. Though. Did you? Yeah. Did you do that? I thought about it, and then I because, decided not uh, to. Because listeners, stroke customers. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you. You know, I can demonstrate how mine sound on an actual phone. Yeah. You know, we'll play them in proper stereophonic first. Right. But right. then, for that added, you know, incentive. I can demonstrate how they sound all tinny on the bus. Yeah. And they sound good. Do you know what? I was going to do that on mine, mm. but I've got an iPhone. Do you now? Yeah. So it would have sounded too good. Really? Would That's sounded... true. They've, have they got, like, amazingly good speakers, those? Yeah. Like, wicked speakers. Really? Yeah, really. Not, is that an iPhone? That's an iPhone. Wow. It's got, look a, little, at that. It's got a little leather case there. Mm. I clipped it on. <laughs> the little <laughs> the clip on case. And it's got a big bit of plastic that I put on, on the cover to protect it. Don't you have to pay like four hundred pounds a month <laughs> to O2 for that thing? <laughs> and can you not only get access to the internet in five percent of the country? Uh -huh. I'm just being negative because I'm jealous. No, I you can get it everywhere. It's wicked. Really? Yeah, it's really wicked. And um I uh what what was I saying? What was the other thing you said? It costs a lot of money. Oh yeah, no, 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 because I was already, I was already on there. Of course, listeners, there are many other phones available, and uh, but n no other phones that make you look like such a punt. Uh Genius, such a genius. Sorry, I, co I chose the wrong He's word. Very jealous. Can you hear all that <coughs> jealousy seeping out there? So uh, anyway, listen. listen, song wars. Um, ringtones. Now, listen, mm. I heard that you've come in with about nine of them or something. I did. Basically, I did some very short ringtones. That's uh, well, and mm. they, they were only about twenty seconds because I thought they needed to be pithy. And the more I did them, yeah. the kind of better I thought I got at it. Right. I started out trying to do uh, a, a kind of a non-hateful ringtone that would be soft and kind of soothing and, and that you'd like to hear and th that was flattering. But then I realised that was a bit wrong. Right. So I went for a more funky one. Then I realised that was a bit wrong, and I went for purely irritating. So are you just doing the sounds. Like, because... No, mine have got vocals. Yours have got vocals. Yeah. But you're approaching it more from a sort of Brian Eno start-up noise no, 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 standpoint. No, 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 no. No. Because that's... Uh, is there not a definite... Unless uh, like, Brian Eno's ill. There is... Uh, is there not a distinction between a ringtone and a sort of alert noise? Like, because a lot of people now, their ringtone is like a whole song. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. So that's what I was assuming that we were going to do. Cool. But you brought in three. You're not allowed <laughs> to bring in three. That's not fair. 
Uh, they're very short ones, though. Not fair! Let's hear yours first, and we'll see how many I need to deploy. I don't think so. Let's hear <laughs> yours first. If you've got three, that is going to be useless. If I if I play mine, and then it's just a complete tidal wave of Joe Cornish ringtones, then that they're is only prejudicial. Short. They're only short. Well, okay, if... I'll, I'll play you a teaser. So play, Jude, play number two. So this is like a, this is a funky one. Uh, this is like, so, so imagine your phone going off and you hear this. Go, shoot. Your funky mother, is your telephone ringing? Time to confiscate cause somebody's bringing words from the mouth into your ear. All you gotta do if you wanna hear is use your hand to pick up your phone. Hold it to your head like an electrical bone. When you hear words, don't forget to answer, but not for too long because you might get cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite good, isn't it? What if they're ringing for longer than that? It just starts again. It loops. So, right, right, right. Which is even more irritating, which is even better. I suppose. So that's quite short. You see, if I just bought that in, it would have been a little bit insubstantial, I felt. Well, that was the whole point. You were the one that lobbied for ringtones, because you said, oh, no, we, we, we're going to have to do all that work. Let, it's going to be New hear, Year. Let's hear your one. This is how he operates, listeners. This <laughs> is the absolutely dishonest way that Joe Cornish operates these oh, scams. Anger today. Okay. Come on, let's, let's uh, hear your one. All right. Well, this is not fair that you are allowed to play just, one just and then out, just, just out, sandwich the whole yeah. thing it's a competition okay and you are not playing by the rules <laughs> all right well this is mine this is like a whole ludicrous thing that's not going to win i come on <laughs> here we go oh, i don't dear. know why i bother come on you got a call coming in it's exciting perhaps it's from an actor or a model or maybe russell brand but more likely it's from someone that works saying why Ain't you done all your work? Just let it ring, it all goes to voicemail in the second they can leave a chippy message which you're welcome to ignore. Anyway, you got this ringtone, it's so different and so special and there's people all around who haven't heard it before. You got a call coming in, you got a call coming in. On your phone in the old days this was enough. But not now, you got to have a flipping song to express yourself <laughs> before you answer your phone. What's an, that's an odd voice, phone. So that's the that's the <laughs> song. You see, you would never hear the end because what generally that? uh, that's just an accent. Generally, the song would cut off after the first. Uh, I don't know how many. Well, people usually answer their phones fairly quickly, but the logic of that mm, one is mm. that people would be so delighted with it, they would just let it ring. Mm. They would even switch off their voicemail in order for the song to get to the end. Yeah. So, should we hear your two hundred <laughs> ones now? <laughs> There's only two others, and and the third one I, I wasn't going to play at all. Um. So yeah, why don't we play? Why don't we uh, hear my other one? This is the super irritating one. All right, you ready for it? Yeah. Number one. Yeah, number one, please. Phone call, iPhone call, you have got a telephone call. Ring, ring, telephone call, someone wants to telephone you. Ring, ring, telephone call, talking on the telephone, someone is trying to call you to talk to you on the telephone. <laughs> yeah. Phone call, iPhone call. See, this is how it sounds actually through. Imagine that on the bus. Ring, ring, telephone call, someone wants to telephone you. Ring, ring, telephone call. Well, they're not. <laughs> Just to take the issue with some of that, the man. lyrics, they that's don't want. So to, they are telephoning you. That's like a. That's like having someone saw your they brain. They don't want really to telephone you. They are <laughs> telephoning you. So I take issue with that. Though. It just doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. What? Well, what about the other one? What this one? No, not that one. Not that one. I don't think we want to hear the other one. Well, the other one's even worse than the telephone call one. Uh. No, it's not as irritating. It just goes in a different direction. <laughs> what a sexy direction. Okay, you, but play it. Play, play number three then. It's not very good. I didn't want to play this one. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt whatever you're doing, but you are so popular. Your phone goes off the whole time with people all desperate to hear your opinions on subjects and matters. And invite you round to their houses For parties with ladies The invitations are relentless Sometimes it can be hard to be so bloody popular You don't want that, what you want is, th is this Telephone call Yeah I haven't right, learned so the words yet. 
Are you going to nail your colours to the mast then, Joe? Are you going with that ringtone? Can I bundle my ringtones one and two into a kind of twin pack? No. And, uh, Look, I Joe, can't. You are Jude's one. laying down the law. She's laying down the law. That's what she does, man. I get punished for making extra effort. Punished for cheating, I think. You're fine. <laughs> okay, I tell you which one I'm going for. This is exciting, isn't it, listener? This is yeah. suspenseful. Yeah, I'm gonna have a little thing. Joe I Cornish. think I'll go for this one. Cheating. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Right, that's my one. Okay, well, we'll remind you of the final selection later on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, much later on, don't worry. There'll be quite a significant gap between then. Hey, and you can vote by texting yeah. 64046, text Adam or Joe, or you can email, if you're listening again, adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. But now, uh, it's time for the news. That's good, isn't it? It's nice to hear the beta band uh, that was outside. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and uh, we were just talking about... Um, whether we'd finished watching all the extras on our Blade Runner DVD giant box sets there. And the answer was, uh, no, not quite yet. There's still quite a lot more to watch. But I watched some new movies over the Christmas period, folks. I imagine that you probably did as well. Um, didn't enjoy any of them. I'm just having a look, remembering. The best one was probably B Movie, which mm -hmm. I went to see with the children um, a couple of days ago. Even though... Totally went over their heads, I would think. I mean, it's just stuff full of things that no child would ever get. Plus a load of very uh, American-centric jokes. Yeah, it's as written well. by Jeremy Seinfeld, though, isn't it? Yeah, so it's going to yeah. be all um, all sophisticated New York intellectual, isn't it? Fairly, but I know what you mean. That's one of the things that's weird about it. Yeah, you know, like fluffy, fluffy bee animal film, but then it's the Seinfeld sensibility. It's a strange mix. Doesn't work for me. It's a, it was very odd. I mean, basically, the the central conceit is that more or less the bee. Uh, played by Jerry Seinfeld at the centre of the whole thing, the B protagonist, ends up having a sort of affair with a human being. Mm. Uh, no, that can be sexy. Played by Renee Zellweger. Women and bees. I've got some mags with that kind of stuff going down at home. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting because you have to use a split focus lens uh -huh. for the different depths of field. Bee filth. <laughs> but it is sexy. Mm. It's definitely sexy. Because mm. at the end... A, a little sting in the right place. Well, after the Hot sting, mama. presumably they die. So that's like the ultimate climax exactly. to a little exactly. act of love. Mm. Uh, anyway, it was still pretty good, Le though, petit movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> le petit mort de le bee, le, la bay. That's what a bee in French is called, isn't it? Isn't it? I didn't know. L an abbe? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, didn't mind B-movie, so you quite liked it. Did you? I ain't seen it. You haven't I've, seen I've it? I've issued a Cornish moratorium on animated animal films. Oh, really? No more. Well, I can't do that. I've got a family. This is no yeah, question true. of me doing that. I'd be mm. in terrible trouble. Um, I also went to see I Am Legend. I Am Legend. Here, here's another name for I Am mm. Legend. Hey. I Am Useless. Hey. Now, some people out there won't have seen I Am Legend. Don't. Uh, don't, that's no, it's, don't it's, it's good for an hour. I tell you what, if you really want to see it, save your money, come round to my house, I'll smack you in the face for four hours. I've got a lot to say about I Am Legend, but I can't really say it because people get angry, upset about spoilers. And you... most of the outrageous things about I Am Legend happen right. in the last 45 minutes. <sighs> it's torture. It Absolute kind of eats itself. It starts out being brilliant, but then completely shoots itself in the in the smith i don't know if uh, i don't know about it being brilliant at any stage oh, here's the, I here's it had the a very good mise -en here's the premise listeners uh the film starts and th and here's will smith he's driving around a deserted new york city it's a bit like the beginning of 28 days later uh and i th i believe they shot it in a similar in similar circumstances yeah I mean, they shot it in london early uh, in the morning <laughs> yeah right uh, uh, but early in the morning in new york city they shot a lot of the stuff apparently when the streets were all deserted and they ran out there and um, messed it all up and made it look as if there'd been a big uh, plague that had wiped out the population of the earth and will smith is the only man left and he's still in new york city and he's trying to find a cure uh, in the meantime he sort of amuses himself by driving around shooting uh, deer and antelope and stuff that are, have escaped from the zoo presumably and are roaming the streets free but here's the thing in the evening when the sun goes down the kind of survivor zombie population of new york city comes out the dark seekers the dark seekers that's what they're called and they've got the worst, stupider CG faces. It did make me think, how, why, who named them Dark, Dark Seekers? And at what stage in the disaster was that name coined? Right. Do you know, because you'd be less likely to call them that than, than, oh, those awful people. Yeah. Or something. The ill people. <laughs> yeah. The very ill people. Or the computer men. 
exactly which is what they are i mean they're a total disgrace presumably they're computer men so that they can move incredibly fast right and in in a sort of weird slightly scary way but what what's wrong with could they not just uh have close-ups with people in prosthetics and stuff and do a bit of old-fashioned makeup that would have been better than the stupid faces they've got on there with the computerized faces i liked it did you really? Yeah, I didn't mind that. I, I just didn't like the God-bothering aspects of it. Oh, yeah. It turns into a Christian film at the end. No insult to Christians, but, uh, you know, it's all over that film in a weird way. But listen to it. Should we have a bit of music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here is Adele, ladies and gentlemen, and this is Chasing Pavements. Oh, that, that's nice, isn't that it? That was Adele. That was like a... That was like my mum... Singing? No, it's just it's that little my mum reminds me of my mum. No, I was going to say it's like it's like your mother coming and and laying a warm towelette on your face and then pushing it. I'm going to say something else, and I'm glad that sentence ended with towelette. Pushing it into your face and until you can't breathe. <laughs> take it off, take it off. God, it explains a lot. Ah, uh, that was lovely. Adele with chasing pavements. What does that mean, chasing pavements? That's just like falling over face first and outside a club. Mean? Bijoux, maybe. Chasing pavements, unless she's really, really on drugs, and it seems like the pavements are kind of getting away from her. That's not, it couldn't be that. Is it text the nation time? it got to be text the nation time, surely. Nation's favourite feature? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. So, uh, it's time for Text the Nation. This is the part of the show, and listen carefully, because this is quite complicated, where you text us on a kind of a theme. Or you can email. Yeah, if you're listening via Listen Again, you can email. Email is adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. The text is 64046. Uh, text the Nation this week. Are we going to do this this one, do you think? Why not, yeah. Why if, not, if okay. It, if it goes wrong, we can do something else. It's just a simple one. Uh, do you ever, when you see a famous actor or actress come on telly, you know, one of the ones that's in lots of things, they pop up all the time, do you ever invent silly names for them? Right, give us... Parallel time. names for them. Like, I was watching a terrible, terrible film called Balls of Fury. Oh, yeah. Uh, the other day, no good. Um, and it had Christopher Walk- Walken in it. Yeah. I like to call him Christopher Walk-On. Nice. Because he has so many walk-on parts. Yeah. I, I-, I say, look, there's Christopher Walk-On. Or and make- I expect people to laugh. It, right. In or, a kind of a dad way, you Exactly, know? exactly. Or if you didn't like him, you could call him Christopher Walk-Off. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like to call the, uh, the conservative leader, James Cameron, James Camera on. Oh. Because he's only, you know, oh, he only yeah. behaves in that way when the cameras come on. James Camera on, mm. uh, James Camera off. I, and I get some very loving looks in my house when I say that. Good. Joe, you're so funny. You are funny. Uh, when Josh Hartnett comes on the Ooh, screen, what do you, what do I you like got? to say, look, it's Josh Hartnett. Nice. Yeah? Because that'll Sounds teach you like a lesson. Because he's so vain. He's so vain. He's a pretty boy. Oh. He probably does wear a hairnet. He's probably got one stuffed in his pockets, or maybe down the front of his trousers. When Harrison Ford comes on, I like to call him Harrison Board. Oh, why? Because he looks so bored he all looks the so time. Bored. And that's one of the things about him. Have you got any of these, Adam? No, because you just told me it's five <laughs> seconds ago. This is what we were going to do. Think think of some during the next record. Okay, I will. Yeah. Kate Blanchett? Uh, what do you call her? Kate Blanket. Nice. I call her Cake Blanket. Cake Blanket. That's taking it one further. I don't know what it means. It, it has no, bears no relation to it. We're her. not expecting, as you can see, any genuine wit in this, but, but, you know, I think this is a habit that a lot of people have, and we'd like to hear, you know, some of the ones that, that you guys come up with. I would imagine, uh, Amy Winehouse is a popular one. There's got to be loads of variations for that. Yeah. This is a kind of, maybe young people don't do this so much, but as you get older, it starts becoming, uh, I think there's some sort of little bit of the brain that starts growing and and just get cynical about everything and you know what i mean well it's a, we were talking about this last year at some point weren't we uh, it's a very dad thing to it's do it's the sort of thing your dad might just walk into the room while you're watching telly and yeah. go huh, josh hermit yeah if my dad used to come in and, oh angela ripoff <laughs> <laughs> oh look it's angela ripoff oh, we talked about that before and but he, so yeah. do text us in with your uh your kind of what would you call them like um you know mutated celebrity names uh, that managed to kind of coax something more, something meaningful mm. out of it. You know what I mean? Some uh, added truth. Yeah, text 64046. We've also got quite a lot of emails about the thing we were uh, doing on one of our pre-records, which is a kind of a placebo text the nation about the, the born uh, supremacy, identity. Yes, yes. Mm, give what, me, what uh, is it? it? It's the ultimatum. Ultimatum. Yeah. No, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. The bo- one of the, the first ones. The final one is called the born ultimatum. ultimatum. 
uh, and we were we were going through on our pre-record some of the stupid things they say to each other in the control room. Give right? me eyes. I need I'm eyes on the. I need eyes on the the what's he called the asset. Give me eyes yeah. on the asset. Yeah. Give me a tic tac toe, uh, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, I can't find it. Here we go. I got it down here somewhere. That uh, was anyway. But other, uh, so there are some of those to go through. But maybe we'll do those after the next record. We got some great emails about that. Uh, so this one is one of your choices, I think, Joe. Yeah, this is a tribe called Quest with a track called Excursions. Gregory Isaacs with Permanent Lover. That was recorded for John Peel, one of the Peel sessions uh, on Radio 1 on the 26th of October, 1981. I had a bit of a, a, a kind of a soft reggae um, thing going over Christmas, personally. Mm. Mm, I bought that album. I got given that album that's compiled by the Super Furry Animals bassist. It's called Furry Selection. Uh-huh. And it's a fantastic compilation of uh, kind of... Uh, you know, really good dub reggae. To have a bit of Lovers Rock in there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I'll be playing one of the tracks from it a little later in the show, so oh, there's something to, uh, to, to listen out for. You went to see the Super Furries on New Year's Eve, right? I did, yeah, at the Royal Festival Hall. How was It was that? quite good. Yeah. They were very good. The event as a whole left a, a couple of things to be desired, I'd say. Well, New Year's Eve, eh? It's always a nightmare. Yeah, there's a slightly odd atmosphere, and it was in the uh, foyer. Wow. And there was just a kind of, um, you know, an un forgettable atmosphere of foyerness about it right do you know what i mean when you do an event in a foyer the whole thing just stinks slightly of foyer it's a little bit dissipated everyone dissipated people wandering around well, it's sitting a thorough in affair, isn't it? Exactly. especially at the royal exactly. festival hall lacked a sense of you know of uh you know i can't i can't think of words this morning will that be a problem no listen man i know where you're at it's difficult because yeah. technically we've been it's away early. for a few weeks yeah so listen, uh, the other week we did a pre-record where we were doing a kind of simulated text the nation. We were asking you to suggest phrases that could be used in one of the Bourne identity films in the control room. Uh, in the actual film, they say stuff like, we went in for a sneak and peek, mm. which means they broke in and, and searched the flat. They Looked say stuff around. like, um, get me a tic-tac-toe. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is kind of, uh, speak, special speak for elevations of a building. Mm. Plans. Floor plan. Activate the asset. Asset, activate the asset, cross deviation, release the funds, <laughs> that sort of thing. So people have uh, sent in some quite good suggestions here. Do you want to hear some? Yeah, go on then. Uh, here's one. Let's consult the owl. Right. Consult the owl. Yeah, this is from Jason. This means we should run the plan past a wise, experienced intelligence officer. Very good, Jason. Yeah. And this is one I like Maybe a lot. Maybe that was from Jason Bourne. Maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, this, here's a good one. Dust and polish. Dust and polish. Dust and polish. Yeah, that's good. What What is completed following a property search to remove any trace of entry? Dust and... That's probably... I bet you the cops actually that's say probably that. probably real, isn't that's it? That's real. Maybe he's a cop. He probably is a cop. He's letting out secrets. Uh, this is from Akio. Apologize if I haven't said your name correctly. The chicken is in the oven. Mm-hmm. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. What would that mean? That just means that it's almost dinner time. The chicken's going to be cooked fairly soon, and they're going to eat right, some Right, so chicken. that's if they're gonna have chicken exactly yeah what about if someone goes turn down the music <laughs> yeah turn down the music that would just mean turn your volume down exactly it's a little bit loud it's very hard for everyone yeah. to concentrate here's a good one dust the shelves and replace the ornaments <laughs> <laughs> dust the shelves and replace the ornaments the kettle is boiled we are out of milk that's a good the one the freezer is in critical need of defrosting <laughs> <laughs> yeah Those somebody's left the freezer door open uh Someone suggesting put the doggy in the basket. But that's a <laughs> yeah. different one, isn't it? From Silence of the Lambs. Put the horse in the basket. Finally, we got a, an email from a guy called Richard Oldham. He says, as a way of exciting our boring office life, my colleagues and I have taken to renaming everyday office items with overtly masculine names. E.g., the stapler has become Magnum. <laughs> and the staple remover has become Cobra. Recently, we've taken to using this to create Bourne Ultimatum control room phrases. So instead of saying, oops, a daisy, uh, I'm, I'm, I've been stamping too many pages together, we say, uh, Rookie's gone rogue with a magnum and I need the cobra to clean up the mess. <laughs> That's Richard. In Bermuda, designing houses for filthy rich people. No. What a job. Man, Richard, can we you're come the and help you, guy Richard? alive. Yeah, please, can we go out there? That'd be great. My dad was a little bit confused by the Bourne Ultimatum. We watched it uh, as our Christmas movie this year. We had it on DVD and we projected it with the surround sound. Nice. Oh, man, it was exciting. My mum had never seen it before and she was digging it. But my dad couldn't. He kept on leaning over going, what, what is going on? Who is he? So I had to explain this and that. And then every now and again, he would turn around to me and say, 
So what is Asset doing now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only his name was Asset. Yeah. Like, I wish uh, that Christian Bale's character in Rescue Dawn was called Dawn. <laughs> it would improve the film massively for me. <laughs> it certainly would. Do we have some more music? Is it more music time? Yeah. I think so. And, and it's the uh, the, the Wombats with BBC Six Music. Six Music. Six music. On digital, online, BBC Six Music. What an exciting sound. The sound of young people getting excited about life, making love to one another, drinking too much wine, locking themselves in hot rooms with instruments until they don't know what's what or who's where. Pushing things off desks and refusing them to pick them up. Refusing them to pick them up. The electricity that sparks between young people with freshly washed hair. <laughs> that was the Wombats with it's moving quite an unenthusiastic laugh there. to New York. No, it was just a you just know, tired. January laugh. Isn't January it? laugh. Yeah. Um, we were we were talking about some of the things that are slightly confusing or depressing about New Year uh, before the show started today. My top three was uh, forgetting to write the correct year on the top of checks, like mm. writing the previous year. And uh, tax, obviously, is another another mm. uh, depressing mm. thing. They're pretty much as soon as your present wrapping paper is in the bin, you get the tax uh, bill. In the recycling box, I hope. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Did a lot of recycling this mm. Christmas. Mm. And uh, what's the other depressing thing? I don't know. You just, you know, it's just a whole new raft of things, isn't it? to deal with <laughs> the new year yeah that's one way of looking at it yes oh god another raft <laughs> piled up with things I hate rafts. Oh, god so listen we're in no, the middle what, eventually of, they'll what? stop coming what the raft and it'll just be the void i know that's so you're true. always looking forward to that that's true hey? yeah sweet sweet void um but before that before the void i think it's time we uh checked in with text the nation Text the nation. Text, 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 text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, it's text the nation time, and this week we're asking you to text in sort of stupid manglings of celebrities' names that make you happy to say when you see the celebrity. Mm. Gives you a little bit of power against their world-dominating uh, everywhereness. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, examples being. My girlfriend's mum calls certain stars Ray the Otter. It's mm -hmm. a very common one for Ray the Otter. But then she carries on to John the Vulture. What's John the Vulture? John Travolta. John a bit left field. And Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal's fine. That's quite a good one. Yeah. I think this is because she likes animals. She's got two dogs, <laughs> says Gus. <laughs> she goes for John the Vulture over just the simpler John Revolting, which is what most yeah, people... Yeah, but that, they're good. That, uh, John the Vulture is quite idiosyncratic. It's quite, you know, mummy-ish, isn't it? It's not that much to do. That, the funniest joke in uh, B-movie is uh, flying a plane. How hard can it be? John Travolta can do it. Something Ooh. like that. I slightly <laughs> mangled it. Uh, it's funnier in the film. Doesn't sound promising. <laughs> I always call Eric Clapton, here's a good dad one, Eric Clapped Out. Nice. Yeah. Ha 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 or not, says Nicola in Glasgow. Bill Oddie, Odd Billy from Dave in the Highlands. That's good. Uh, what about for Bruce Forsyth, Bruce Forkknife? <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> That's quite good, isn't He's it? He's just made that one up. He's got a he? slash in between Bruce Fork slash knife. That's from Andy in Birmingham. Bruce fork knife. Uh, that's quite good, I think. I'd be happy saying that whenever I saw parents, him. <laughs> what did they used to call him there? It was something like Bruce, uh, false, so, oh, I don't know. False tights, no. False tights. I don't know. Have a think about that one. There's a, there, obviously there's a load that you couldn't say on the, Mo in Aberdeen has a good one for Kira Knightley. Ikea Knightley. Nice. Yeah? That's what Nearly like. works. It's nearly an anagram. And she turns Amy Winehouse into Amy Wine Lake. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. She drinks a lot. She and drinks. She's gotten difficulties. An awful lot. Because of it. Uh, Panda Wolf in East Coat. What a bizarre name. Uh, calls Whoopi Goldberg. Wait for it. Mm. Whoopi Goldfish. Goldfish. Yeah. My friend's got a joke that goes, did you know that Gerard Depardieu is marrying Whoopi Goldberg? Yeah. She's going to be called Whoopi Doopy Doo. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a good joke. Anybody? Yeah, that Hello? is good. That is good. I was just my brain was processing yeah. it. My dad calls the to Toyota Prius. Hang on a second. My dad calls Toyota Prius drivers Toyota Pius. Yeah, because of their smug, self-righteous choice of car. He also calls Natasha Kaplinsky Natasha Lipstick Sky. 
<laughs> Lipsticksky from Jenny. Lipsticksky. Yeah. Uh, Tom in Bournemouth says, they, you know, they're not supposed to be funny, funny, but they're just strange and they're, just they're like little family secrets. Just words. We like to call Amy Winehouse Amy Hairhouse <laughs> because of her hair. Because <laughs> she's not so much of it. <laughs> uh, I'd call her a, like Amy, Amy Facehouse. Yeah. You know what I, face. you know what I call her? Amy Tattoo Hairs. Because <laughs> she's got tattoos. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That is good. House. What? Amy Tattoo Hair's house. Because then it sounds like her name. I just thought at the end there, I just popped it in. Yeah, yeah. Amy... yeah I'm just looking through the rest of these. You know, I might have to v- uh, vet these a little bit. Pete Drink Drugs Tea. <laughs> That's good. Write some of those down. Oh, I should have written that one We'll down. come back to that. Keep them coming in. Uh, Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc.co.uk or text 64046 if you've got any kind of cleverer ones yeah sounds unlikely but you know hey it's our first show back in the new year folks come on you know cut us some slack will you please now here's a choice uh, that i made for you listeners hope you enjoy this one i don't hear too much frank zapper on the radio uh possibly because a lot of the stuff in his songs is sort of filthy and um profane he writes a lot of songs about sex and stuff um even though that was that was his big vice zapper wasn't it he was a sort of sex sexaholic a bit of a pornocrat um but that was it he never took any drugs the worst thing he did was smoke a lot of ciggies which may have contributed to his eventual demise unfortunately um but he was a great guy i've always been a big fan of his and this is a track from one of his best albums overnight sensation and it's called camarillo brillo hope you like it frank zapper there with camarillo brillo this is adam and joe here on bbc six music What's that all about, then, that title, Camarillo Brillo? Is he saying that something is Brillo? Like yeah. Brillo pads, really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Camarillo a place? I think it is. Like Amarillo. I know Amarillo. The front. Yeah, maybe it's a kind of a car. I'm not sure. It's a load of uh, arcane American references that I'm not familiar with. But it's nice. I like his voice. Mm. Even though he's just mining pretty much one little uh, tune there. Riff. He just carries on. He's not bothered about it. The worst you can say about Frank Zappa is that he, his voice is very insincere. Do you know what I mean? Like mm, he's, he's, mm, mm. he's got arm's length kind of business. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But I, I don't mind that. There's, you know, you couldn't only listen to Frank Zappa. It would drive you nuts. But every now and again, it's nice. It's, n- it's like a little tasty yeah. donut. Hey, this is Adam and Joe on uh, BBC Six Music, the station where we play six bits of music over and over again. That's true. It's yeah. not true. No, isn't it? No. Okay. Got a lot more than that. Oh, you know, one of the weirdest things I saw on telly over Christmas... Oh, yeah. Um, ...was Shane McGowan on TV Burp. Wow. Did you catch that? Didn't catch that. At the end of Harry Hill's TV Burp, he has a bit where he illustrates one of the things he's talking about by having a fight, usually between two celebrities. It My is, least favourite kind of, part of the show. Yeah, thing that goes into the break, bridges the break kind yeah. of thing. But on the Christmas special, he announced that... Uh, I forget what the lead-in was, but the build-up was building up to Shane McGowan versus uh, a bottlenose dolphin. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought it was just a, a word joke, you know, a little picture painted for the mind. But he gestured to his left, and <laughs> lo and behold, out came Shane McGowan. No. Looking quite extraordinary. I mean, he's always an amazing man to look at. Yeah. Because he's lived such a life, and he's sort of out of the limelight a lot, so every time he pops up, it's like kind of looking under a rock and <laughs> seeing how things are progressing in the nicest possible way. I, you know, I think he's a genius. He's very seldom shoveled, certainly. Absolutely, yeah. And he was looking very, very... Um, Disheveled. Yeah, not not a lot going on in the tooth department. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the eyes seem to be interested in separate things. Uh, much too much extra skin on the face. Right. All heading to downwards. Yeah. Um, big as well. Uh-huh. Lots of lots of booze still in there. Big boozy pillow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, still understanding. You know, compass mentis mm-hmm. and and punching the dolphin. And you know, it, I really like that when kind of your heroes turn up on slightly mainstream, trashy programs. There's something really cool about that, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. That'll be a great TV moment. Seeing someone like sort of holier than thou turn up on something because people like that they they kind of wouldn't turn up on a on a respectful program you know they kind of purposely go for something a bit 
a bit mainstream and even yeah. though that program is fantastic yeah, it's a brilliant program but i couldn't quite believe i'd seen it and i thought maybe i was hallucinating <laughs> that'll be on youtube presumably won't it maybe yeah i'm gonna have a good. look at that later on it was good that sounds excellent the best thing I, I didn't catch any of those special shows you know i didn't see the extras christmas special or anything like that none of the things that you were supposed to watch that were like exciting appointment to view type things instead i caught like loads of dreadful stuff like i ended up sitting right the way through the best of top gear I've never watched Top Gear in my life, and I watched the best of Top Gear. It was torture. There was absolutely nothing else on at the time. And uh, I was just flicking around. We, we were in the countryside. We didn't have satellite or anything. We just had the five channels. Channel five was so fuzzy, you couldn't really see it. It was just like a snowstorm. So more that's or less... What the, that's actually what they were doing for Christmas. Was it? Yeah, snowstorm. Oh, Seasonal. Just, right. Right over the Christmas period. There you go. Anyway, it was, it was barely watchable. I was quite bored of the snowstorm. So ended up with Top Gear. Have you ever watched Top Gear? Yeah. I oh. quite like Top Gear. What is your mental problem? I like it. I saw their one where they went to the North Pole. How can you stand it? Because it's like Blue Peter for retarded men which is your favorite man uh i don't like any of them no of course not which but is I your least like favorite man a good show. how can you deal with hammond the hamster He's... well listen hey our producer jude has she just loves hammond bit. let's play a record talk about this and make sure we're not hurting anyone's feelings jude and, loves and the then hamster. we'll talk about people hammond love the this. hamster listen hey they love him He's... here are the staple singers they hate hammond i, I happen to know this is called let's do it again yeah. that's the new young pony club with the bomb this is adam and joe here on bbc six music now we came across a band called the young pony club didn't we are they now called the new young pony is that a different band or have they had to put new in front of them because there's another band called pony club something's going on there some kind of pony club politics it wasn't they were called something slightly different but but it they was definitely called young pony club wasn't no they? it was there was ponies in there but it wasn't uh wasn't exactly mm. young pony club but anyway that's the new young pony club and as far as far as the world is aware, it's the main pony club to be concerned with at the moment. Uh, now we're in the middle of text the nation. Have you got any more uh, mangled celebrity names there, Joe? Yeah, Cornish? lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Okay, the the idea for text the nation this week, listeners, is um, you know celebrity names, famous people's names that you mangle domestically for your own personal entertainment. We're not saying these are brilliantly clever or funny, even though some of them maybe, uh, but they're just weirdly satisfying. Um, so are you ready? I'm going to go through them quite fast. I remembered the name of the band. What is it? Vote Show Pony. Oh, that's right. Was the other band, yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is from Matt Garner. He says, instead of Christopher Eccleston... Mm. Can you guess any of these, Adam? Christopher Eccles Cake. Correct. Nice. Instead of Michael Parkinson... Michael... F Fartinson. No, oh. Michael Park Your Bum. Michael Park you Your see, Bum. He's a chat show host. Not Instead of, and this was one that was very popular in, in, in America <laughs> with the people that don't like the lesbian ladies. Mm -hmm. Instead of Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen Degenerate. Correct. Oh, really? That's, yeah. a, that's a little bit anti Instead of, uh, though, isn't it? Yeah, but, you know. Right. It needn't be connected to her sexual preference. Well, it's bound to be, though, isn't it? That with from? DeGeneres. That's from Bryn. Uh, here's another one. This is from D, the D man, Damien. Yeah. Uh, instead of Nelly, uh, hang on, I've forgotten her actual name. Fatado. Fatado. Well, she's almost there, or, a anyway. Uh, f f f f f No. What? Nelly Retardo. Oh, that's not very nice. Of instead of Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, Gwyneth... Poultry. Poultry. Or poultry. Right. Yeah, lots of them there. Maybe it's part and parcel of being famous that you have to have a name mm. that's easily mutated, that people can have fun with. Well, mine, of course, would be very easy. You just stick an F on the uh, at the beginning of Buxton, and you're sorted. That's what used to happen to me at school. What about you? Uh, just pasties. Joe, you know? Joe Cornish pasty. Yeah, corn plasters, that kind of thing. Corn balls. Never, no one ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> My dad calls Colin Firth, Colin Filth. To annoy my mum as she fancies him, says Becky in Norwich. Also, when I was a child and a big Stock Aiken and Waterman fan in the 80s, my dad called Rick Astley Dick Ashtray. Ah. Dad, nice one. Dad, dad you would have do totally dealt with the situation there. Chris in Whitley Bay says, I've heard people using Joe Corny as a slight on Mr. Cornish recently. <gasps> Joe Corny. I'm flattered to be talked about anyway. I don't if mind if it's... If there's one thing you're not, it's Corny. Hey. Joe. Thanks, okay. man. Yeah, I just thought I'd help you out there. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Woodward becomes, says Claire, if you remove all... What? All the Ds, Iwa woo -wa. <laughs> <laughs> That's very lateral. That's quite good, isn't it? Iwa woo -wa. <laughs> Uh That's all we've got for the moment. 
Uh, Blobby Williams, of course, is the other one. More text the nation, uh, coming later. Keep them coming. Text 64046 or email adamandjoe.6music music at bbc.co.uk. Is it time for the news now? Yes, here's the news. Is that where they got their name from? Yes, that is, that is where the is band got their name from. Does that mean that's their favourite Talking Heads film? Uh, no, it's not their favourite. Who? It, you'd have to be insane if that was your favourite Talking Heads song, but it's not a bad one, come on. That's uh, Talking Heads with Radiohead, that's from their, probably, I, I guess most people would agree, their worst album, being True Stories. Oh, I've got a soft spot for that, though. Uh, listen, I've got a big soft spot for it. I love it. It was their big launch. It was a movie, and it was supposed to take them to the mainstream. Yeah, there was there was even two versions. There was the soundtrack album uh -huh. of all, like, original music from the film. Lovely cover design, kind of typeface, yeah. logo, that big kind of bold red and white thing. David Byrne, incidental film's music. Film's good. Cronus Quartet. The film's kind of a bit of a lost classic, isn't it? Is it? Or a lost average, not very classic. Haven't watched it recently. Is it even on DVD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yes. it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's worth seeing, certainly if you're a Talking Heads fan. Mm. But uh, the awesome. but the album the b album by the band that accompanied the film uh, the mm -hmm. big hit was Wild Wild Life, mm. and uh, it's an odd one. It's a very odd one. Very it was David Byrne one. making his transition into kind of his fascination with world music and Cajun and all sorts of uh, different styles, and the band was a little bit disparate there. Anyway, that's more than you needed to know. <laughs> oh, phone call. Oh God. <laughs> Sorry, this goes my new ringtone. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, sorry, I'll that. Well, speaking of which, we should remind people what the deal is with Song Wars this week. Joe and I, as you can hear there, are trying to construct ringtones that you might you like trying. to use. Well, okay, have we successfully. have We have successfully constructed ringtones that you, the listeners, might like to use on your mobiles. Uh, now, we don't actually know how to get them from the radio into your mobiles. We'll sort that out at a later date, if demand is sufficient. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, I, 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 I mean, it's a, a genius conceit there for Joe Thanks, to man. actually put his ringtone on the mobile there by demonstrating the Your efficaciousness. Ringing, don't play that one. Why not? Because you st you're stick- <laughs> Listen, don't make me get angry hey, again. Hey, dude's getting angry. Listen, I really object. I went- I made extra effort. I did three. Listen. I made extra effort, and I'm being treated like a pariah and a cheater. It's not. Why is that cheating? Listen, listen I'll explain I went to you. Out of carefully. my way to do I extra work. Yeah, but after. So if I listen, write an extra long essay, he's just. Do I get thrown out listening. of school? He's not listening. I'll this listen, is I'll this listen. is what happened, listeners. This is what happened last show that we pre-recorded before Christmas, Joe was uh, huffing and puffing, oh, all these pre-records, there's too much stuff, I haven't got enough material, uh, you know, we're running out of stuff here, can we not do Song Wars for a few weeks? So we said, all right, listen, let's just do something simple. So Joe said, I know, why don't we just do ringtones? Mm. That'll be nice and simple, super short. Uh, we don't have to, like, really kill ourselves to, to do the ringtones. Fine. Everyone agrees that to give Joe a little break, because his brain's running out, we'll do something simple. This isn't actually simple. what happened. This is it? exactly what happened. Mm. What happened then? Huh? You You wanted to do something super <laughs> short and easy. For Song Wars, because you said it was yeah, too much yeah. to, to get it together for That's the new fair year. Enough. I, right. I wasn't purely me. I was going to help everybody. It was an altruistic thing to help us through the Here Christmas we go. period. Here we go. So anyway, everyone agrees. And then he comes in with a big armful of his crazy stuff. That's not fair, though. That's trampling all so over the rules. So are you suggesting that, that what I was doing was a, was a, was a kind of, uh, you know, deflective tactic? Is that what you're, no, no, you're no. genuinely oh. suggesting that I was like thinking, I know. No, no, I'm not. But you can't just suddenly change the rules when it suits you and come in and say, oh, well, you know what? I know that I, I wanted to do something easy that didn't take too much effort, but I've decided to go completely the other way and trample all over the rules by having three instead of one for Song Wars, which is no... I think I've done quite well because I've managed to play all three. Yeah, well, you've done very you well. Know? But but now we're narrowing it down to just the one. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, we've, we've reminded listeners of yours, I think. Do you think? Yeah, I think. Do you think? No, but that was through the phone. They might want to hear it in proper stereo. You made your bed, Mr. Corner. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, fair enough. So, we'll just hear Adam's one. Here we go. <laughs> you got a call coming in, it's exciting Perhaps it's from an actor or a model Or maybe Russell Brand But more likely, it's from someone at work Saying why ain't you done all your work? Just let it ring, it will go to voicemail In a second they can leave a chippy message Which you're welcome to ignore Anyway, you got this ringtone It's so different and so special And there's people all around who haven't heard it before 
you got a call coming in, you got a call coming in. On your phone in the old days this was enough. But not now, you got to have a flipping song to express yourself before you answer your phone. So there you go, that's mine, Adam Buxton's ringtone. Let's play Joe's, come on, I don't want him to be upset about the whole Song Wars thing. Here's Joe. Phone call, iPhone call, you have got a telephone call. Ring, ring, telephone call, someone wants to telephone you. Ring, ring, telephone call, talking on the telephone, someone is... Yeah, so there you go. Which one of those would you like to hear coming out of your mobile phone, listeners? Second one. Uh, it, uh, as you can hear, someone someone emailed us last year to say, oh, come on, stop being so nice to each other about song wars. We know there's tension bubbling underneath. All right, now the tension has properly surfaced this week. <laughs> hey, there's song a text wars. here from Jane from BBC Interactive saying we can put the ringtones on the WAP site for download mm. on Monday. Jane, wow. there's, there's going to have to be financial discussions first. We're going to have to talk about how we'll split the revenue stream. Uh, so this is it, man. This is a big one, you know, because fortunes could be made off this. So it's a very important song wars for I'm so many reasons. I'm going to put all three of mine up. Here we go. Look, uh, let's now. This is your choice. I'm moving. I'm moving on. I'm segueing to another thing. Look, I found out some facts about Tennisor for you, Joe. Hey, so we should just tell people, uh, vote for either Adam or Joe on 64046 or email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. The winner of, uh, Song Wars this week, possibly the most uh, vitriolic and, uh, you know, uh, divisive, -filled, divisive Song Wars of all time yeah. will be announced, uh, on next week's a show. A lot is riding on this vote. But now coming up, here's a record I chose from the album I was talking about earlier. The, yeah, like, the, uh, the um, oh, look, I facts Googled on the iPhone. On, on Wikipedia for you though. Uh, this is from the compilation album put together by the bass player of the Super Furry Animals. It's called The Furry Selection, and this is by Tenor Saw. Uh, it's Ring the Alarm. You'll recognize it when you hear it. Uh, some facts about it coming up after the track. Oh, that just suddenly ended there very quickly. We were looking at uh, Tenor Saw facts on Wikipedia. He died when he was 22. That's tragic. Killed by a speeding car in Houston, Texas. There you go. A great loss not only for his family, but for reggae music as well. Quite right. Tenor yeah, Saw ring the alarm it's a classic track and and yeah must recommend again that uh compilation the furry selection if you like a little bit of dub mm. rubber dub dub i love to be rubbed then that's the uh the album for you it's really really very good mm. Mm. i'll be playing some more from it in forthcoming shows so stay st t tuned have you had the sick bug joe cornish no no sick bug yet no sick bug yeah have you just been uh keeping yourself away from humans uh no i eat an enormous amount of fruit that's not going to protect you from the bug. You know, I didn't get ill at all in 2007. Did you not? No. Not once? Not once. No time off? No, I don't get ill a lot, generally. Didn't get the snuffles? Mm, no, not in any major way. Right. No. Good job, man. Yeah. Very good. Are you taking any uh, vitamins there, or any supplements? No. Really? Just a lot of acid on weekends. Yeah. What's it's your secret, true. then? Uh, lots of fresh fruit? I think just lots of fruit. Yeah. I don't know. Just lots a lot. I eat a lot of fruit. Watch out for the acid on your teeth, man. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> it can really play havoc. Really? You know, because fruit's... I'm not listening to the downsides of fruit. No. People say it's going to make me more farty. People say it's going to make me go, you know, yellow. Because mm. of all the oranges. Right. But I don't listen to them. I'm just going to eat that fruit. It's I good for you. Fruit. It's basically good for Little you. Little sweet apples. Mm. Oh. <laughs> What's your favourite kind of apple? Little sweet, uh, Royal Gala. Ever had a Fuji? I um, don't like the Fujis. You don't like the Fujis? Nah. Why not? Well, I just don't like, um... One time. <laughs> That's where you were going, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Fuji apples I like are delicious. Royal, Royal Gala. Listen, you better watch out, though, because you'll get the bug. Everyone, you think? Everyone gets the bug, the norovirus. when I come indoors. Uh... Always wash your hands with soap and water when you come in the house. It's not going to help you. Oh, it does. Everyone gets the norovirus. What's the norovirus? This is it, man. It's called the winter... The winter the, the vomiting, vomiting bug. bug. Yeah, it's the never vomiting. never had it. It's I've new... never vomited from a cold, you ever. Know. No. I haven't vomited since about 1987 right seriously i don't vomit man i hadn't vomited for a long time before i got this one it was not a welcome return to vomit land it was awful and the worst thing about the virus if you're unlucky enough to get it listeners is that uh you can't even enjoy yourself when you're lying there in bed you know because one of the nice things about being ill is you can just lie there do a bit of work maybe read some books that you were meaning to read for ages watch a few movies you know you can't even do that because you're constantly nauseated, right? You're right on the verge of the vomitorium, 
and it's uncomfortable you can't really sleep properly it's just the worst luckily it only lasts about a day and then you're so- sorted but you're not supposed to go out afterwards don't go in- into contact with other human beings for a couple of days because you're still contagious and this thing could get way out of hand it, you know we might have to get dustin hoffman involved and uh the whole place it might turn into i am legend which would be incredibly boring so for goodness sake take care of yourself <laughs> It's what I'm saying. That was a little public health. Yeah, I kind of tuned out. I just came back in for, for goodness sake, take care of yourself. Yeah. I'm right behind that. (laughs) Yeah, just spun round green. (laughs) Absolutely. Listen, here's a band called the Duke Spirit. This is a track called The Step and the Walk. All we know about them is the following six words written on this sheet. Mm -hmm. They toured the UK in November. Ooh. That's the Step on the Walk by the Duke Spirit. They toured the UK in November. They've got a beautiful and funny lead singer called Leela Moss. And that's from their forthcoming second album called Neptune, which is in the shops on February the 4th. Joe, who's, who said we don't know nothing about them? Exactly, exactly. Uh, now, the, 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 the direct decorations are still up. In hey, the listeners, studio. you've got to take your decorations down today. Today, is it? Yeah, today's the deadline. Is it not, or is it tomorrow? tomorrow you know what happens if you don't take your decorations down? Oh. Evil Santa comes. Good Santa comes on Christmas Day if yeah. you have the decorations up and leave them in spies. If you don't take them down... Evil Santa comes. Satan. No, he's just Santa. Right. He's got a blue suit (laughs) and he nicks things. Right. Every day of the year. Yeah. For a whole year until Christmas. Yeah. Opa Santa. Yeah. And if you're unlucky, he'll have an affair with your girlfriend or wife. Oh, that happens anyway. Santa's, really? Yeah, the real Santa's got carte blanche to snog who he wants. It's true. Women love Santa. They really do. They go crazy for Santa. Nothing gets a woman hotter <laughs> than Santa. <laughs> than a big fat man in a chimney. Ho, 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 I'm going to miss Santa. Oh, Santa. I am. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, I see so little of him. I've seen so little of him. He, My brother used to set traps for him. He pops around at Christmas. Um... People still believe in the Santa. You know, my my little nephew, uh, who was about eight or nine, he, quite old, you would think, to still be that is old in Santa conflict land. Mm. He was he got genuinely upset about it because he basically knows, and his older brothers have told him. Like, obviously, there's no such thing. Oh, what? Ooh, I'm not supposed to say that, am I? Because you know, some children are listening. But he is. Um, Man, he's really conflicted. He absolutely doesn't know. Listen, children, there's no conclusive proof either way, all right? So you believe what you want to believe. Uh, but, um, man, he was struggling with it. He was in tears on Christmas Eve, just saying, I don't know what to believe! I felt really bad for him. He was in tears. Yeah, he was. He was absolutely distraught because he was getting so many conflicting messages, you know, mm. from the kids telling him the cynical line. Surely, why does it matter to him as long as you get the prezzies? No, because he, it's more, it's about more than that, Joe. Is it though? Try to cast your mind back <laughs> to the I magical can't. All times. I knew was that a weird man was breaking into my house and... Did you get no excitement out of the fact though, that there was like a, an actual physical presence involved in the whole situation? Like a bloke? Yeah, like a, but, but a strange guy, you know. You know what? I can't remember. I remember my brother laying traps for Santa. Right. Yeah. Well, he was excited about some it. difficulty for my parents. Yeah. yeah. And, and you never thought, huh? I think I, I think I saw him. You, you never, like, your parents didn't, like, used to creep into your room with the stockings and stuff, and then, and then you would think, huh? I think I saw him, mummy. I think I saw him last night. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Definitely. I can remember a couple of Christmases where I was pretty confused because the most of my brain was telling me no. Some kids have parents who actually dress up in a costume. That's right, of course, mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. My, I don't think my parents ever did that. Not that they would have done, of course, children, because uh, they had nothing to do with it. It was the big fat man. But take those decos down today or tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. And burn them. You have to burn them. <laughs> really? No. No, you don't burn the tinsel. <laughs> I made that up. That's you bad don't burn for the planet. Them. But if uh, you want to be certain that evil Santa won't come, you would burn them. Did you have a tree this year? Yes. Uh, have you disposed of it already? New. No. New. No. How do you this ha- afternoon? What do you do? Do you just put it outside? You or? Eat it. Always eat it. You eat it. Yeah. How You've do you eat it? How do you prepare it? Just use it as a garnish. That's nice. One very big garnish. Like a big sprig of parsley. Yeah. A huge <laughs> sprig. Yeah. And one mince pie. We have the last <laughs> mince pie. <laughs> Stick the tree in the top of it. Pour some honey on it. Eat it. Yeah. Yum yum. That's nice, and that's good for the environment as well. It is. Should we have another trail? You end up with a very prickly poo, though. No, we're not having a trail. Who would want a trail? Hey, this is a bit of rhythm and blues from the good old days. This is Howlin' Wolf. 
The primitive drum sequencing of Run DMC, an early primeval hip hop band from America. Can that you was imagine how, Adidas. how giant that drum machine must have been? It must have been the size of three rooms. houses. Houses. Rooms. It's true. In the old, in the early days of computing, yeah, drum machines they used to take up the size of a football pitch that's to right. make the sound of a cymbal. In the early now, days of hip hop, that's right. It used to take a. Uh, uh, a sort of aircraft carrier yeah. just to yeah. get the samples in there. Now you can get the whole Wu Tang clan on the head of a pin. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? How, th how times have moved on. That's Woods. true. I was thinking about, uh, there's lots of Wu Tang clan, or is it just one on Knocked Up? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, isn't it? I hadn't heard that one before. The one at the very beginning. Uh, that's, isn't that Shimmy Shimmy by Old Dirty B Starred? Yeah. The Starred. That was good. There was some good music on that film. Uh, as opposed to. A good year, is it? The Ridley Scott one. Oh, did you see that? Well, because you said it was worth seeing. Yeah. So I tried to, <laughs> I sat down last night and tried to watch it. This mm. is the one with Russell Crowe mm, as the kind mm, of mm, city mm, boy who mm, goes mm, off to live mm, the good life mm, in Provence. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Deliciously poor. I didn't make it through. Um, no, you got to see it at a cinema where you're trapped. Right. It's big screen, you know. And beautiful. Part, part of the, beautiful. part of the problem with the whole thing is that it's got some of the worst film music like songs uh, uh, you know use mm. of songs that i've ever heard in my life mm. and i could i didn't make it through to the end so i didn't see if they were songs that were specially written for the film or if it was stuff that riddles had gone out and, th and it turned up on his ipod and he thought oh, this is going to be good for the film i'll pop this one in the film oh my lordy i might try and find some of it and, and bring it in do i week. can't remember the music it was is shocking. it all like Renault cleo advert type stuff no it's nothing that good it's like sort of overwrought uh sub rufus wainwright ballads mm. but but up tempo it's hard to describe I it was really film. horrible music great film um and uh yeah i'm gonna see it i'm gonna try and bring great some film in. what a film so oh here's a Lord. here's a quick email from green coos hmm? what sort of a name is that it's, it's a, a nice good name, name. coozy and Didi. they say and this is aimed at you adam yeah. how's the jaw harp playing it's a great fun instrument when you get the hang of it. Mm. Uh, listeners who listen regularly might remember on our exciting Christmas show where we bought pres presents for each other, I bought Adam a jaw harp. Uh, he sliced his lip open <laughs> with it. <laughs> Immediately that stabbed kind myself. of dampened the excitement on the day. But how's it been going? It's been good, man. Uh, I haven't got it with me. No. Have you been playing it? Have you played it at all? Be honest. Uh, no. Have you t have your fingers touched it since yes. that day? Yes. Uh, I yeah. played it for for my son when I got home. Did he, you? He wanted to know what it was and, really? and he was fascinated How by it. How did that go? It was good, man. He thought it was amazing. Don't let him try. It's dangerous. I said Slice no. I kept off. it away from him. Because yeah. there's two types of those things you can get. You can get one that looks, it's sort of mushroom An shaped. expensive one and a cheap one. And then, well, no, I thought yours was charming. And the one that Joe cheap. picked up, which was like a sort of decorated nice. little t cardboard tube with uh, a very sharp mm. metal prong mm. in it stuffed inside it and basically you kind of vibrated the prong against your mm. lip but i was a little tooty maybe we had some champagne in the studio when we did mm, that mm, pre-record mm, mm. and i just whipped it out not knowing what it was in my excitement and jammed the thing right through my lip pretty much it was really i was bleeding all over the area but uh no it was a lovely present and i'll i'll cherish it forever mm. bring it in next week and play some maybe i will yeah things to remember for next week music from a good year yeah and, and jaw harp jaw there harp. you go okay. koozie and dd that's that's dealt with that one there for you i've got a uh have you got anything else there joe that you need to read out no shoot i've got a track for you listeners um i picked these at random during the week you know jude our producer she emails us and says what do you want to play on the weekend chaps and it's always the wrong moment for some reason. Do you know what I mean? Like, y you sort of hear things as you're going along or listening on your iPod, and you think, hey, that's going to be good for the show. But then when the email comes through, you're a bit panicked, and you think, oh, I've got to respond. I just picked some random tracks e from a, a random playlist, and this was on one of them. But it's one of my favorite police tracks, as in the band The Police, uh, led by Stung. Um, but it's not a Stung track. It's written by, I think, I'm right in saying, Stuart Copeland, the drummer. And I've always got a soft spot for, the drummer? for Copeland's tracks, you know? Because usually when the drummer gets right in... Copeland is a very accomplished film soundtrack composer, that's amongst right. other things. Yeah, but his pop songs are sort of cheesy and ludicrous. And I'm always amazed that Stung allowed him to actually put them on the albums. You know what I mean? In a way, there's there's a couple that are a total disgrace of his. In a, in Which a good album way. is this off of? Uh, this is off Synchronicity, I believe. Oh, I love that album. Yeah, I really do. It's got one of the best songs ever written about Nessie. Right, Synchronicity I, I 2. pop songs that mention Nessie or Bigfoot, anything like that. Especially, uh, it's rare to find a song, a serious song. Mm. You know, you get a lot of Tenacious D-type stuff about yeah. 
mythical creatures, but a serious rock song. In a dark Scottish lock. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And back then, you know, it was as if Nessie could have existed in the 70s. There's a film coming out all about it, of course. Uh, the, what's it called? The Water the, Horse. The Water Horse. Yeah. yeah. They should put that track on it. Anyway, that's Synchronicity 2. I've picked for you listeners a very odd song indeed. It's called Miss Gradenko. Enjoy. I like that. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, I like the police a lot. Uh, I don't suppose you're going to see them live. They're still touring, right? I think. No. Have they finished touring? I don't know. Mm. No idea. You're not forking out 75 quid or whatever it is for the coppers? No, no. They're, apparently they're playing a storm, though. Wherever they go, they're great. I like to, um, personally see the band. These bands that, uh, do these reunion tours, they play in such huge arenas. Uh -huh. That you can't really, uh, one, one can't afford. Yes. Yeah. you, like, mortgage your house to sit close enough to see them. Right. It's just like standing in a big field watching a giant telly, isn't it? So you didn't go to Zeppel's? Didn't see the Zeppels, no. And uh, sorry to be ignorant, I know everyone knows this, but are they still touring, or is that just a one-off? No, one -off that was or... a one-off, it was a benefit gig, but there's rumours that they might they carry right. on touring, yeah. They are later in the year. Oh, are they? Is that official? I think so. Wow. Yeah, later in the year. I thought it was yeah. kind of like a test gig. Well, it went very well, apparently. Very well. I You're think good. everyone, everyone I know who saw it Thumbs said it up. was amazing. Uh, check this out, though. I had, I heard about a friend of mine who got his mate, like, as a present, he got him tickets to the Zeppels, right? To the Zeppels gig for, I don't know how much those tickets were. A over, a, pounds. over a thousand pounds. But they were a lot. You know, it was like about a hundred quid or something. Anyway, he got them fairly on. He was one of the first people to book the tickets. But then by the time the gig came along and the, the, the prices of the tickets on eBay were just spiraling out of control astronomically, people were paying thousands of pounds for them. So his mate said, listen, you know, I just can't give you these tickets. Because uh, he hadn't actually handed the tickets over, he said, I, "I could get like a grand for these, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give them to you. Uh, I'm gonna sell them myself instead. I'll get you something else." This is like the story you told the other week of the friend who bought the friend the little Banksy. That's work right. Of yeah, yeah. Your yeah. friends are always in. No, no, that in... was a happy story, though. A happy story. Yeah, but there's yeah. a lot of selling and trading and financial this is assessment. Not a, <laughs> this is not a close friend. It's uh, it's, it's, it's only two stories. It's someone I heard. Uh, right. But but uh, that's pretty rough, isn't it? it? Makes a certain amount of fiscal sense. You would be hard put to forgive a friend who. Did Maybe that they're too. a hard up student trying to pay their student loan off. I don't think so. I think I heard no? it was uh, the the guy just couldn't bear the idea that he'd bought his mate something that, that was, was actually shocking. worth thousands of pounds. <laughs> hey, listen. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, it's the last hour of our show, coming up to the last 45 minutes. Um, before that record, the police record, we were talking about their track Synchronicity 2, which features a reference to the Loch Ness Monster, and it's given us a brilliant idea for Song Wars next week. Mm. Uh, mythical Beast songs. Oh, that was for Song Wars, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Songs about uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, three separate entities, of course. Yeah. Don't get them confused. No. You'll only make them angry. <laughs> The, 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 the Loch Ness Monster? Yeah. Poltergeists. Ghosts. Uh, it's, could we do poltergeists and ghosts? No, you think it has to be, it has to be cryptozoological. But there aren't that many, are there? A unicorn. unicorn. If any, if Adam does a song about a unicorn, I'll be quite upset. Why? Because I just don't like the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> just the general idea. Just the way you turn I've never really liked unicorns. Unicorns. I never really like unicorns. Unicorns. <laughs> Even that one in Blade Runner, the, the prongs all fuck. all comes back to ridley doesn't it centaurs centaurs no well now, come on these have got to be you know creatures that some people believe might currently exist on the planet oh really yeah it can't just be like fairy stories well there's not that many though are there coelacanth i suppose i could write no about. there's lots man the choco popo choco burra what's that it's a kind of mexican goat eating thing i thought it was the like a lollipop the mothman the chapa chapa. you know all about this stuff because you read yeah it won't take times. you long just a quick look up on Arthur C. Clarke's mysterious website. Uh, all right then. Well, I, listen, I bags, I, I bags the Loch Ness Monster. Loch Ness Monster. The Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. The water or horse. Or her. The water horse. That's right. Yeah. Loch Ness Monster is a sort of benign monster. Not like the Yeti that's vicious. Bigfoot. Oh, horrible, ill-tempered Joe's creature. obsessed by Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Bigfoot print. I've got a cast of Have his you? footprint. Yeah. Is it signed? <laughs> <laughs> no, he couldn't hold the pen. He's too angry. <laughs> Uh, more music now. Here's the new single from the White Stripes. This is Conquest. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, it's Text the Nation time here on the Adam and Joe radio show thing on BBC Six Music this Saturday morning. And this morning we've been asking you to text in your mangled famous people's names that you use in your households. 
uh, whatever kind of modern um, cohabitational setup you have. Mm. Maybe two gay men and one lesbian. Maybe six lesbians, one gay man and an old man and, I don't know, a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a disabled policeman. A disabled policeman, three lesbians, two gay men and... What, what about the straights? Why, why, why don't they get a look in here? It's just not very modern. Oh. It's a bit old hat. It's an old-fashioned straight. It's been straight. done before. Yeah, it's been done, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, what, how do we get into that? You got into that, mate. <laughs> can you you ploughed us into that out? one. <laughs> can, you, can you get me out of it, please? <laughs> Here we go. Grab hold of this. Uh, not that! Yeah. So, yeah, we've been asking you to text in uh, ways that you mangle celebrities' names in your houses to make it more interesting when you see their faces all over the shop. Uh, and, you know, these aren't particularly witty or original, but there's something strangely satisfying mm -hmm. about them. Uh, of course, Hugh Grant. Yeah, Huge Grunt. Huge Grunt. Yeah. He might as well change his name to Huge Grunt. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things, you know, another part of this is is the theory that to have a name that can be easily mangled actually helps you. That's true. Up the slippery showbiz slope. Huge Grunt. Stephen Rodley, reminding us of Huge Grunt. Uh, here's an email from Helen Williams. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrion. Because his films are ridiculous, like carry-ons. Right, right, right. Yeah? Yeah. For Demi Moore. Huh? Uh, Demi Moore. No, you no. can't say that. Can I not? No. Sorry, I was, sp I was spelling it H-O-A-R-E. Oh, right. You know, it's like what? a family name. Oh, Hoar. <laughs> yes. Hoar. Hoar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Helen Williams calls what, what, Demi Moore yeah. Demi Talented. <laughs> Yeah, half talented. Oh, yeah, that is very sophisticated. <laughs> you thought she was just being flattering. Yeah. Instead of calling her Demi Moore, I call her Demi Talented. Demi Talented. She's so talented. Do you know what I call her? Demi Fantastic. Uh, Janet Street Porter. Uh, Janet Street Cleaner. Uh, yeah. Right. Eh? Those exactly. are all from Helen. It's all right. You're allowed to feel a bit silent about these. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Richard Hitchens. My brother and I always pronounce Sean Connery. Oh, no, I can't read that one. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> you know what I thought of one the other day? And it was uh, when I was watching This Morning, usually fronted by Phil and Fern. Yeah. And who was who was standing in? But Julian Scary. Really? Scary? Do you yeah. think he is scary? Oh, my Lord. Have you seen him recently? Yeah. He's He was dressing all super straight. And uh, he had, like, a very natty suit on. Yeah, suit it's his daytime on. look. Yeah. But he can't do the sincerity thing, you yeah. know what I mean, very well at all. His eyes are slightly lidded, and, and there's a cynical aspect to him that doesn't sit well with the daytime format. Plus, he has a very <laughs> young haircut, like he has a young boy's haircut. It's sort of a feathery, like almost like a schoolboy, page boy cut or something. Like Richard Hammond. It's very odd. No, not a page boy cut, but uh, no, it's much shorter than the hamster. But anyway, it occurred We've to me... we met him, haven't we? I've met him. We met him a couple of times at, at Jonathan Ross's house. Julian Scary. Yeah. He, yeah. Jonathan Ross had a go-karting party that we went to. That's right. Uh, during which my girlfriend nearly, very nearly got killed by Jonathan's agent in a go-kart. Yeah. And Julian was there. He was very nice. He is a very lovely... Very quiet. I, I'm not saying he's not a lovely chap. His boyfriend at the time was a very old, small, bald man. <laughs> that surprised me. I thought, you're on telly, you're gay, you'd have a really attractive boyfriend. But no, tiny, tiny little bald old man. There you go. No insult to anyone, in case they're still <laughs> very, very happily <laughs> cohabiting. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliantly sidestepped there, Joe. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. I should cover all angles you should, legally. You should work for the UN. <laughs> <laughs> My dad is a keen gardener, changing the subject. So some of our mutated names stemmed from gardening, as in Spruce Forsythia. Nice. That's quite an elaborate one for gardening, Have we dad. had Bruce, uh, some mangleriza mangleriza of Bruce Willis yet? Uh, no, Willies. It's always Willies, yeah. isn't it? It's got to be. Bruce. Yeah. Bruce Forsyth. Oh, Bruce Forsyth. That's the one I was yeah. thinking of. From James and Lewis back in the 80s. I used to refer to Molly Ringwald as Oily Ring Mold. Mm. That's quite good, isn't it? That is good. Yeah, that's a more sophisticated one from James. Uh, Chris also has a Molly Ringwald one. Uh, Molly Ringworm. Yes, that's, of course, that's that's your the more standard one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't help but refer to the third Doctor Who as John Turp Wee. What? Twerp Wee, I meant to say. Uh -huh. I kind of ruined that one. Sorry, uh, Paul Kelly. More of these? Uh, give us exactly one more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My girlfriend Karen uses Lenny crab sticks. <laughs> Come on, they're not supposed to be funny, but you can just imagine someone going, <laughs> Lenny crab sticks again. <laughs> yeah, and expecting exactly. some sort of response. That's right. 
Lenny Crabsticks is an absolutely <sighs> ideal way to conclude that part of the program. <laughs> that was Text the Nation, but not, you know, uh, not for nothing is it known as the nation's favourite feature. It is. And let's hope it, uh, keeps hold of that title in 08. Do you know who's a big fan of the feature? Wh who? Barack Obama. Is that true? It's his favourite feature. He's the first black president. The only thing that worries me, it obviously hasn't done it yet, but it's, uh, it's gotta be a shoe in They can't possibly vote for that nutty other man. I hate Huckabees. Uh -huh. Can they? Well, is he the Democratic candidate? No, he's the no. Republican. No, yes. I don't know what's going on. I know there was a caucus. Is that, in, is that good? Yeah, there are in, several caucuses. In Iowa? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, Barrett won that the one. The thing that worries me about Barrett winning is all the big disaster movies have black presidents in them. Yes. You know, it's always Morgan Freeman. So the second we get, they get a black president, the disaster, that's the trigger for the disaster. Aliens are gonna invade. Actually, yeah. no, when Independence Day it was Bill Pullman was the president, wasn't it? That's true. But, uh, yes, Morgan Freeman was the, uh, Deep, Deep Impact? Deep Impact president. Day after tomorrow was that about? I, I don't know yeah the aliens anyway, are going to invade. not saying that's in any way you know connected in it in a meaningful <laughs> way oh, i think God. lots of people thought it was play a record, play a record. <laughs> no there's no records oh, now it's going to be news time shortly are you going to step out to the sales after this just quickly step before out we to go the to sales yes <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not you know have no you ever, have you ever been to a sale uh no i don't no. think so why would you want to go it's I've been to the insane. hmv or or the zavi one you yeah. know there are other mega stores available oh, it's, it's nice when they have a sale in the middle of yeah. the year but the whole idea of doing the winter sale thing is just a total nightmare anyway that was just a little <laughs> aside i was thinking about it now apparently there are other things going on in the world that you need to know about i find it hard to believe but here with details is the news that was bell and sebastian with wrapped up in books but it sounds almost exactly like you're gonna find me out in the country by the farmer's boys. Ba 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 ba. You know that track? That's a good track. Both good tracks. Listen, you know, he's done something extra with it, which makes it okay, and Bell and Sebastian have their own unique thing going on. I'm just pointing out that there are similarities there. He better watch out from a legal point of view. That's what I'm saying. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and now it's time for, for a jingle, jingle. For, for a jingle jangle. Jingles. Jingles, jingle jongles. <laughs> It's time for Song Wars, the war of the songs, a couple of tunes by a couple of prongs, so check it out. Yes, Cindy. It's not the right jingle I, I, I wanted to play for this email. Oh, you wanted the, uh... Here's an email from Dick Thompson. Right. Hi, Adam and Joe. Can I just say what a refreshing change it is to hear two well-spoken lads on the radio <laughs> instead of those awful estuary English accents we're normally forced to endure? Now, I'm sure you have... I'm reading this quite posh now. Yeah. I'm sure you have high standards in everything else you do. So can I point out a little faux pas in one of your jingles? Mm. In the Song Wars one, you can be heard saying, quote, Which one will you vote for? Which one is the best? Close quotes. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that when comparing two objects, you should be using the word better. Best can only be used for three or more objects. I've therefore taken the liberty of rewriting the two lines affected by this as follows, colon. Which one will you vote for? Which one is the better? Vote for them now by email, text or letter. <laughs> if, if there is anything else with which I can help you out, just give me a call. Regards, Dick, Dick Thompson. This a email has been scanned by Net Intelligence. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, Dick, for that. That's absolutely true. That's uh, correct. The subject of the email is suggestion for improving your show. <laughs> that would improve it. You know what? Do you Dick? want to sort that out next week? I will. So I'll Look, can you, you give that to me, and I will fix Make that, that for you, Dick. Uh, although to take you up on something, uh, it's not which one will you vote for, which wouldn't scan. It's which will you vote for. Which one is the best? Uh, That's nice. how it goes currently. Shame. You've murked him up. Uh, Hop you up. know, I, I absolutely murked you. Is that another yeah, word? That's that another street word. Say? Oh, man. <clears throat> um, so anyway, to deal with this week, though, boy, what, what a, what a tense making, uh, song wars it's been. You know, I'm relaxed about it. I've come to terms with the fact that, that you perceive my generosity of creativity as cheating. You know, I know I agree with you. I agree with you. It must, it must seem like an underhand tactic. But I assure you it was done in all innocence. And, uh, now, um, I am a bit, I think I might have chosen the wrong one. This is the thing, you see. He, he walks out <laughs> feeling <laughs> as if he's been the victim of some kind can of religious I, persecution. Can I switch mine? No. Nope. Because I think the other one's better. He's going to go home. He's going to go. Here, if you want to hear he's it. He's going to go. Oh, Do I want so it? hard. No one understands me. Uh, you yeah. know, they, they, they That's give me cheating. such a hard time. What's cheating? Playing both. 
He's doing it again. <laughs> He's doing it again. I'm not. I'm not going to play. He's doing it again. I it, thought we'd resolve this. I'm I thought not, we were going to move on. I'm not going to play the other one. I'll drop your mic. He's going to walk out of. Uh, I'm not going to play BBC the other one. But if somebody today. happens to call me, no, oh. she's faded him. Oh. She's oh, trying she's her best to fade all the mics. Yeah. There. You know, they'll they'll all be up on the website, listeners. If you're around for the sales in the West End, you might like to look at Joe Cornish coming out of the building <laughs> uh, at around about five past twelve. He will be looking like Jesus, and he will, in his mind, there'll be a halo. Why am I being persecuted? Why, what have I done wrong? I just want to bring light to the world with my cheating jingles, and instead I'm being beaten with holly branches for the trouble I've gone to. That's what's going on in your mind, isn't it, Jesus? I'm turning the other cheek. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Slap me, hit me again. So let's, let's remind you, listeners, of uh, what we have. Let's hear you. Adam's first. Let's hear mine first. This is my jingle. I want you to vote for it. Jingle, uh, for ringtone, ringtone. This is Adam's ringtone. You got a call coming in, it's exciting. Perhaps it's from an actor or a model, or maybe Russell Brand. But more likely, it's from someone at work saying why Ain't you done all your work? Just let it ring, it will go to voicemail in a second They can leave a chippy message which you're welcome to ignore Anyway, you got this ringtone, it's so different and so special And there's people all around who haven't heard it before You got a call coming in, you got a call coming in on your phone in the old days this was enough But not now, you got to have a flipping song To express yourself before you answer your phone There you go, that's uh, Adam's uh, ringtone there Sorry that I didn't load it onto my phone the way Joe did To demonstrate to you exactly how great it would sound Coming out of your phone speakers But use your imagination Now, Joe Cornish, would you it's like to just, introduce It's yours? just that that one seems very bassy and I'm not sure that uh, mobile phone speakers could handle that kind I of did. Bit. What you need is something a bit more sharp and irritating. Right, okay. You know, a bit more like cheese gratery. <laughs> That's what the kids <laughs> like. <laughs> oh, yeah. shut up! Kind of thing. <laughs> something a bit like this. Phone call, iPhone call, UFO, a telephone call. Ring, ring, telephone call. Someone wants to telephone you. Ring, ring, telephone call. <laughs> Talking on the telephone, someone is... Trying to call you to talk to you on the telephone. telephone. Yeah. Joe was grooving around. There's, <laughs> there's a lot more to it than meets the ear. Let me put it that way. You pop that on your phone, then, you know, hidden, it's like a flower. Hidden depths will open up. So get voting. You can text us, uh, either, uh, text us at, um, the number is 64046. 64046 is the text. That's you, te you text the name Adam or Joe, depending on which one you want to vote for. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's just for the remainder of this program. Yeah. If you're uh, voting during the week, email Adam and Joe. That's Adam A N D Joe dot six music at BBC dot co dot UK. And of course, if you're listening again throughout the week, that's the case for you as well. If you want to vote, uh, you can. You can vote right up until Saturday morning, pretty much. When do the votes close? We don't want to get into any kind of scandal. Uh, Saturday morning. Saturday morning, mm. okay. They're, they're collated just before the show on yeah. Saturday morning. Okay, so. By a go. team of collators. Mmm. Or, yeah. What? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> here's Cajun Dance Party with the uh, Amelie. No, other way. No. Is it? I yeah. oh, no, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm really sorry, man. I'm sorry. Honestly. I'm sorry. Cajun Dance Party with Amelie's. Uh, they're an English five piece. They're all still in the sixth form, according to these notes. That could be slightly outdated now, but they're certainly very young. So if you like them, good for you. You're you're helping out the kids. Helping out the little If people. you didn't like them, then give them a break. They're tiny. They're little kids. What are you doing? Honestly. There was I was watching that program that um Nigel Godrich does, uh that you were at one stage gonna present until they decided that would be a dreadful <laughs> idea. <laughs> From the basement. Uh, it's really good. From the basement. Yeah. yeah. It's what cable channel is it on? It's on the arts channel, isn't it? Sky yeah, Arts. Yeah, if or... you've missed it, listeners, you should check it out. It's one of the best, uh, you know, pure music shows on, on telly. Mm. It's got no presenters at all. It's just bands performing in this sort of uh, underground studio space. It's really well shot, mm. very kind of unpretentious and, and really good. And, uh, there was a band on there the other day. Uh, I can't work out what they're called, but their drummer was, he looked about 10. Right. Curly blonde hair. Do you know who that is? No thrashing away amazingly at the drums and they had a slightly asian looking girl singer oh wait maybe I it think was... they were a three-piece it could have been deer hoof 
Uh, was it Deerhoof? No, because I saw Deerhoof at the Royal Festival. Oh, oh, really? They were brilliant, supporting yeah. uh, the super furry animals. They were fantastic. They had a fantastic drummer as well. He just had one cymbal and a drum, and he was making all kinds of racket out of it. It was Lightning brilliant. Lightning bolt, maybe? No, they're older than that. Yeah, oh, I, don't know. I don't know. I'd be interested to know. But the general point of that blurble was that you should check out um, From the Basement. From the Basement. I believe I was uh, one of the people that came up with that title. Really? Well, I originally suggested The Basement I Tapes. I hate the title, but Thanks. the show's brilliant. Basement Tapes I suggested, um, but Nigel said no because it'll be too much like the Bob Dylan album mm. and mm. people won't be able to get the association mm. out of their head. And then maybe maybe our friend Garth came up with uh, from the basement. In fact, it's very good. Very that good was music before show. we got edged out of the whole project. I know. Be- better than the Holland, who I find a little bit grating. I don't know. It's just me. Great bands on there, but Holland just looks tired with the gig. He looks bored. Well, he's got too much <clears throat> of an editorial policy on there. Even Do you think? Uh, yeah, it's too. Does he bet the bands? Well, he's. He, I mean, Do you have to, he, even he... though it's not all all the bands aren't to his taste, there's still very much a kind of editorial through line on that show, even though they've got such a wide mm. ranging thing. You know, what sometimes I mean? when they jam together, the noise is awful. It's almost like you want a certain type of music. You don't want mm. such a, a a wide variety of choice. Sometimes you know, because mm. you always feel with Jules mm. that you have mm. to switch mm. off mm. for a few minutes. Mm. Sometimes. Yeah, I don't know what you think, listeners. But, uh, uh, From the Basement is a bit more streamlined. Certainly, I would say it would be more to the taste of your average six music listener, even though there probably isn't such a thing as the exactly. average six music listener. No, no. You know. They're all lesbians and gays and policemen. <laughs> You're obsessed with lesbians, gays and policemen. That's just a callback. Uh, now, um, this is a track that you chose, Joe. This oh, is- yeah, this is, uh, this is from a film that I saw over the Christmas period. I saw this film in Paris. Oh, I went to Paris before Christmas. I love Paris. It's in Paris. That's my favorite city. I, I, I live there. J'habite I am French. Oui, je suis français. Oh, et tu vois, c'est oui, aussi. Bien. Aussi. I did this thing, right? A uh, very short story. A friend, yeah. friend of mine bought a hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wore it. A chapeau? A chapeau. From, oh, yeah. from un petit magasin près de la Centre Pompidou. Oh, je from a, That means from a little shop near the Pompidou Centre. Oh, yeah. Uh, a touristy shop. He bought a hat. Cinq minutes plus tard. Five, five minutes, minutes later. Yes. Yes. Le chapeau est cassé. Oh, the hat is broken. The hat broke. Yes. The fastener. Oh, the... the, 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 the uh, le claspé. My friend could not speak French. No. Stupid friend. Ne parle pas I, had to, I had to go back and do the negotiation uh, with the hat man. Il faut retourner et négocier. Hat man, hat man John. Avec the uh, hat man Crothers. <laughs> <laughs> hat man Crothers. Yes. Uh, so I had to speak in French. Mm. I said, monsieur, s'il vous plaît, mon ami avait acheté sept chapeaux. My friend has bought this hat. <laughs> uh, mais le chapeau avait cassé. But the hat has broken. Est-ce que c'est possible pour échanger le chapeau? Is it possible to exchange the hat? The man said, uh, he said, no. He said, no, mate. <laughs> no, he said in the French equivalent of no, mate. You've got to be kidding. You're English. You'll never come back here. I don't <laughs> yeah. give up. He, he was very uh, rude and, and abrasive. Yeah. Now, I, my French is limited, right. as you can tell. Be at O level. Uh, I've got nothing between please exchange the hat and j'appelle le police. <laughs> <laughs> so I went straight for oh, j'appelle le police. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me startled, uh, laughed at me. <laughs> 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 I, I was all over the place with my um, French arguing. Right. Uh, and in the end, he called me oh, Sarkozy. Sarkozy. He accused me of being on the side of France's, you know, uh, riot police uh Enforcing right. Basically president. saying you're a fascist. Yeah. Right. But then his mate stitched it back and mended it. So oh. It was all okay. It's Don't look nice. Fine. Nice. Yes. Happy ending to that story Paris. about Anyway, that. the film that I saw was called Paranoid Park. Gus Van Sant's new one about mm. a teen skater that kills a man and feels very guilty. Oh dear. And wanders around. I loved it. Yeah, good one. Extraordinary sound design. Ooh. People listening to Six Music might be interested in sound design. The year's most beautiful Very good film, sound design. It says on the Does it? Pictures, yeah, it might, be, yeah. might be true. Mm. Uh, but this is a track he uses in it. This is Elliot Smith with Angeles. That was Elliot Smith with Angeles. Uh, that's it for this week. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. It's a very long fade into that track there. I like a nice long fade it's in. It's good to yeah? play the whole fade in as well, not exactly. like chop it up like other less, you know, uh, less good shows might do. Less tall DJs might do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's nice, you know. You don't, you don't want to talk right the way up to no. where the singing starts, because no. you lose all uh, mellowness. Yeah, there we go. That's mellowed me right out. Now. Thanks for everybody who's texted and emailed as well this week, and keep those votes for song wars coming in. Don't forget to vote Joe. Just text Joe to <laughs> six four zero four six, or you uh, can text Adam to six four zero six, or you can of course. Email now. 
now. You can, of in course, fact, email. That's yeah, absolutely correct. Don't bother to texting. Do Register email your vote to via Adam email. And Joe. Six music at bbc.co.uk. And of course, don't forget you can listen again to this show on the BBC's website. It's very easy and enjoyable thing to do. And uh, we're going to sort the podcast situation out, listeners. I know it's taken us a long time to get round to it, but we're still settling in here. We're at banking music. material. Yeah, we're banking material. Uh, it's all going to be exciting. I think there's even going to be like two types of podcast. It'll, there'll be like a regular one that's a digest of each week's show, you know, like a little condensed version. And then me and Joe are really going to do our best to do one that's especially constructed with kind a of... A family uh, one and a blue one. A little bit of a blue one, yeah. Kind of Derek what? and Clive one. Not that extreme. But anyway, we'll let you know what's happening as and when. Liz Kershaw is coming up very shortly, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, for, for now, we're going to leave you with Kate Nash. Happy New Year. Lots of love. Have a great week. I love you. Bye. <laughs>